This video is gonna walk you through the Red Mountain Mining Area route. It's a Jeep route, but you could just take any sort of four by four vehicle that has some clearance. You maybe could even get by with an all wheel drive like a Subaru, as long as you have some ground clearance on it. But we'll walk you through what the, what the path looks like. This is down in the San Juan mountain range in the Southwest part of Colorado between Uray and Silverton. It's a little bit of a bypass from the Million Dollar Highway, which is also known as Highway 550. The footage is all from uh, mid-September of 2019, and we are just in a stock Wrangler Sport JL. In the distance there, you can see where High Highway 550 is wrapping around the mountain. And actually from that highway, you can see the mines that we're hanging out at and driving by, but you really get to be close up and personal if you take this route. As I mentioned, this is off of Highway 550, also known as the Million Dollar Highway because that was the cost of the highway back in the 1800s when they built it. They built the highway here not because of the amazing views, although it certainly has those, but they did that because there is a lot of minerals. So we have silver and gold and copper in these hills and the mining industry really took off at that time. I'm zooming in now to pretty much the midpoint as you're coming up to Red Mountain Pass at the peak of the highway. And you can see there's a little white outline of where there's a bit of a bypass road off to the side. Let me just highlight that so you can see it a little bit better. Is my really crummy highlighting job, but that shows the upper part of this loop. And all that we did was the upper part of the loop. You could continue taking it all the way down on another trail that will take you down towards Silverton. So you're gonna see some video here of us driving Highway 550, and you can see what that looks like. This is pretty much just leaving your Ray area. And if you were to just drive from your Ray to Silverton on 550, it only takes you about 45 minutes. And that's in a general passenger vehicle. We do not take our RV on this. So if there's RV people out there, we don't drive our RV on this road. And I highly recommend not taking your RV on this road. Anyway, we stopped first at the Uray Tourist, um, like the, uh, tourist office that they have. And you see that right when you come into town and it's a great place to stop because you can pick up different handouts about walking tours for the historic district area in downtown Uray. You can pick up a flyer about ghost towns that are in the area. We did some of that while we were here too. And then you can find a lot of information about different four wheeling driving areas. There's some Jeep badge of honors down in this area. Those are more um, difficult passes. So this is definitely something easy that's family friendly. You can do it in a stock vehicle, but they have some uh, much more extreme Jeep trails and things that you can do as well. A little view of what it looks like off the edge of Highway 550. There's no guardrails, there's no shoulder. Sometimes there's not even a white line because that disappears. But anyway, we are traveling south now from Uray. So pretty much from like the Beaumont Hotel is at, you're gonna head south about 10 miles. And just when you pass milepost 84, you're going to be on these switchbacks and you're going to see a um, little less than a mile, so about 0.8 miles south of where you see milepost 84, you're going to see a left turn onto County Road 31. And that's where you're going to turn in order to be on that bypass route and where this is going. Okay, one last tunnel to go through here, but wanted to show you, I think this is probably flood damage here. All these trees that you can see down here, maybe avalanche damage as well, but um, you can see all the trees that have just been knocked over on this side and on the other side of the tunnel as we go through the tunnel. There's a couple tunnels on this um, road, not going to be an issue for your Jeep, but of course another issue with having RVs and trying to do this stretch. So as you finish up on these switchbacks and you're coming through and you take that left-hand turn for County Road 31, you're going to cross over two bridges right away. And then you kind of have to swing left as you pass that second bridge. You, it almost looks like there's a route that you can take that goes to the right and keeps going forward, but you're going to want to turn left to keep going up into the trail. You can see the beauty of this area. The San Juan Range is really known for these red mountains. That's why this is called Red Mountain Pass in the Red Mountain Mining Area. And you can see how the mountains have all the orange and reddish tones to them. And that's just because they're so mineral rich. The mining that was here was really specific to copper 
silver, and gold back in the days when it was popular. And when the mines left, a lot of them were ore mines, when the mines left, they left behind these major structures that are still standing. And thanks to the kind people who allow the easement of public the public to come and view it, you can actually still come up here, even though these are on privately owned properties. Yankee Girl Mine, off from 31, just off from the 550. Got our Jeep right up here, no problem. Soft top, unlimited, standard, sport, suspension. This is the Yankee Girl Mine. We are outside of your ray, doing a little jeeping up. Red Mountain Pass. You can see all the beautiful mountains out in the distance. That's what the road is like up here. And quite honestly, the paved highway is not that much safer. Very glad we are not trying to do it in the RV. The structures that are left standing are privately owned, so it goes without saying to be respectful of it. And of course, you don't want to go inside of these. Uh, they weren't necessarily super safe when they were built in the 1800s. They're certainly not safe now. So it's the kind of place where you can get some really amazing photography and you can enjoy from the outside and peek in, but you do not want to be going inside. I bet it's even illegal to be going inside of these old mines. In total, you pass by four different mines on this northern part of the Red Mountain Loop, although I would have to say that the Yankee Girl Mine is probably the most impressive. Leaving the Yankee Girl Mine, we started heading down towards the Genesee Mine, and at this point in time, I'm still driving. I don't like to do the really hard stuff, but as you can see, this isn't really technically difficult at all. This is flat it's nice and groomed if it was rainy you would not want to do this route just because the road becomes very slick and dangerous and so this isn't really the type of place to go if there's a lot of rain but you can also ask them at the Uray visitor center how the conditions are on this road before deciding to head out to it you can see down there in the distance kind of in that little dip over there is where the Idorado mine is at and then we're about to stop here and kind of check out the Genesee Mine. This trail really could go in either direction. So you could come in from the Silverton side, kind of over by the entrance by Ofer Pass, or you could go in through the Uray side like we did. And there's plenty of room to allow other vehicles to pass you by and go around. The hardest part of this trail, which wasn't even very hard, is just after this, there's a couple of little tight turns where you're just kind of switching back and forth as you're working your way a little bit lower in elevation and there was a bit of a dip and so having a bit of ground clearance was helpful and that could just be that part of the road was just washed out where we happened to go. I don't have it on video, but just below there where you can see, you can see that the road's going to kind of do a little bit of switch backing. Driving the Jeep up the Red Mountain Pass Trail, Red Mountain Town, I guess it is, and there are just mines galore up here. That's the road. That's actually a really calm part of the road. <laughs> Most of it's not like that. You can see the San Juan Mountains there in the background. <coughs> On the distance, you can see where the mines would come down and bring the minerals for catching the railroad. And that road out there is 550 which at this point doesn't look too bad, but it will get steep and have major drop-offs and there is no shoulder and no guardrails. Extreme up here, but very, very beautiful.
At this point, you're done with all those big views and vistas and any sort of switchback stuff. And there's just a nice little creek that runs by the side of the road. What's nice is that you're not actually in any sort of state park or national park, so you can bring your pets along with you. And we had our dog with us on this journey. And then uh, along here, we wanted to step into the creek and kind of feel what the water was like and uh, you know see if there was any gold in the river which we didn't find any <laughs> but um, we did see some cool areas where you can tell there's old mine shafts that are carved into the mountain they have them barred off at this point in time because they want to make sure nobody's going in there and getting killed but it's cool to at least see them and you can go up to the bars and kind of see what it looks like in there Hello! The rivers and streams will certainly make a mess of your shoes and your Jeep. Don't worry, nobody went in the caves. You can channel your inner John Fielder with all the amazing photography opportunities. Jeeping in beautiful Uray, Colorado, the Red Mountain Town. These are the old mines. There's a bunch on this trail. This is a four wheel drive trail. But really stunningly beautiful. San Juan Mountains. Hi Maria. And then the last mine that you'll pass by is the Longfellow Mine before you start working your way on the main road and get back onto Highway 550. From here we went on to 550 and continued down to Silverton. There's actually a bit more of an extension of that uh, county road where you can keep taking that and come down here. We just didn't know it at the time. If you want a great guide for traveling to this area in Colorado, really south of I-70, Charles Wells has a great book on Amazon and it's I'm sure it's available at a bunch of stores and it's all about 4x4 trails that are in southern Colorado. And so that's meaning south of I-70. He has one for Northern Colorado as well, and he has a guide for Moab. And these are excellent guides. We didn't have it at the time, but we've since bought it. And it does have this Yankee Girl Mine Trail and the full extension all the way down to the other part, plus a bunch of other options. If you wanna do something that's beginner level like the Yankee Girl Mine, or you want to do something that's a bit more moderate and you're souped up and ready to do moderate or extreme. So lots of options. I'll link to that below in the notes so you can easily find that. Thank you so much for watching. We are RV Homeschool, family of four traveling US and Canada in our Jayco Seneca and towing our Jeep Wrangler. We bring different content about the national parks, RV travel, and now Jeeping. So thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and you can subscribe for more content.